good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, being here with us today. For those of you who are just joining us and those of you who have stuck around, thank you for doing so. We have a fantastic afternoon uh, portion of the lineup. Uh, and just before we get into it, I just want to take this one moment to thank uh, Ali Cleva and Lauren Mensch from CNN for putting together today's program. Okay, uh, now uh, I, I think we actually probably have the best uh, segment of the day. Um, and we're going to uh, look at the current war on truth uh, in this country. Uh, for, this, uh, for this conversation, uh, I want you to welcome the current chairman of Warner Media News and Sports and the president of CNN, Jeff Zucker. And uh, uh, I'm sure he will be fantastic today. And in conversation with Brian Stelter, CNN's chief media correspondent and the anchor of Reliable Sources on CNN. Jeff and Brian, please come up. Thank you okay, for being thank here. you yeah. for being here. Okay. I think I'm right here. Where are you? You're there. Okay, I'm over here. I'm still new to this TV thing, Jeff. I'm still trying to it's learn. Only, it's only been six years. That's right, it's only been six years. A lot has changed in six years. Uh, one thing that's changed for both of us is the president's Twitter feed. And I recently learned on the president's Twitter feed that you will soon be resigning uh, from CNN. Uh, he did spell the word resigning wrong, but he is the president, so what's the truth? So I do have an announcement to make today. I'm not resigning. <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, I, am, I am not resigning. I have no, no intention of resigning. And where do you think those tweets come from? I think, uh, you know, look, I think there probably was too much executive time that day. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, look, I think he clearly has been agitated by CNN, uh, and uh, there was probably something uh, done that day, uh, and he was trying to take a shot at, at CNN. He uses me as the proxy for that. Mm. He tweeted that uh, I would be resigning soon. That is not true. I know it's surprising that there might have been something wrong in a tweet, uh, but that is not the case. <laughs> do you ever get used to this? Are you, do you think it's, a, do, you know, do you just roll your eyes at this point when he tweets about CNN? Um, you know, I'll tell you a story about the, the day that came out. That was, uh, we were uh, in Columbus, Ohio, doing uh, final preparation for the CNN Democratic uh, presidential debate that day. Yeah. And it came out at about two in the afternoon, something like that. Were you in debate prep? Yeah, we were just finishing debate <laughs> prep that afternoon and we were about to lock the whole debate. And it, it came out, uh, the president tweeted that uh, Jeff Zucker would be resigning soon. And so, you know, it comes out and we have 50 people who are in these two rooms working on debate prep. And they're like, they're not sure, like, is this true? <laughs> and um, they don't know what's going on. And so somebody brings it up to me, shows it to me. I go, wow, I didn't know that. And, um, and so I went into the other room. I said, guys, listen, uh, it's been really fun working with you. <laughs> and uh, look, do you ever get used to it? I, I, you know, it, it's, it's a little surreal. My children started uh, uh, texting me and saying, is this true? Uh, so you have to go through that. I, I'm pretty used to it at this point. Yeah. It is surreal. I mean, we are at the point where, I hate to say, a lot of the president's words are, they're worthless. They, they, they're, they're meaningless because they're, they're so often untrue, and yet there are lots of people that believe them. Oh, I, I, I think wonder, that's, the, that's why he does it. It's the, it's the contradiction. Yeah. Was there a point for you when you kind of stopped giving him the benefit of the doubt, so to speak, or stopped believing every tweet he said or something? Well, look, I think it's our role, look, it's our role to make sure that we hold him uh, responsible to tell the truth. And, and so I don't think you can uh, say we disbelieve it or we disbelieve everything. I think that would be unfair. But I think we do have to know that with every tweet and every comment, we do have to, uh, uh, we do have to fact check it. We do have to uh, make sure that we hold it to account. And you know, I think if we, if we say we're not going to believe anything he says, I think that would be unfair. Mm -hmm. But I think we do know that we have an obligation to look at everything. To look at everything. Uh, sometimes I get. Uh, emails, complaints from our viewers who say, why are we airing his events live? You know, you, you've said we're not airing the rallies live every time because they're, they're the same thing every time, but we do show his uh, pool sprays and cabinet meetings, uh, and, and I think there's an argument that we shouldn't show that at all because there's so much misinformation being spread. Yeah. So look, I think this is a, this is a difficult issue, and, and you know, I get, I get those emails as well. I get a lot of internal <laughs> uh, conversation about that within CNN. 
should we be taking the cabinet meetings? Should we be ta taking the chopper talks that he right. does uh, uh, in the absence of any uh, press briefings or anything like that? I think this is a very complicated issue. On one hand, I understand uh, those who think we shouldn't take it uh, because we should just turn it around and, and only play the newsworthy parts, that we should take the time to fact check it before he says it. You know, my view of this to this point has been he is the President of the United States, and when he speaks, that is newsworthy, and that is important. And frankly, you don't always know what he's going to say or where he's going to go. And I also think it's equally as important for people to see in real time, in fullness, what he's saying, how he's saying how it, he's saying it. Uh, what his verbiage is, and, 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 and the, the like. So, look, I understand that sentiment of people who don't think we should take it. I, to this point, have been of the opinion that when he speaks, uh, he is the President of the United States. It's our job in real time. Look, we've taken to fact-checking him in real time. We put up on the screen the other day, you know, the Constitution of the United States, when he was saying that the Emoluments Clause wasn't real. Well, then we put it up on the screen, because it's real. Uh, and so I think it's our job to fact check as close to real time as we can, to certainly come after he speaks, and to dissect in real time and fact check it. So, you know, I think that that's where I come out. I do understand the, the other sentiment, but he is the President of the United States, and his words do matter. What about his aides or his fans, right? Uh, Sean Duffy's a new contributor on CNN, and some of the same complaints are being made about his appearances. So uh, I get that as well. Um, look, I, I think that I think there is a lot. Uh, listen, there's a lot of emotion around this president right. and this presidency, yeah. and so people who uh, watch CNN, people who work at CNN, uh, you know, there are there are folks out there who are never going to be comfortable uh, with anything uh, the president says. Anyone who defends the president. It's my view that if we don't hear from people who support the president, either in his administration or on Capitol Hill or, uh, or outside of the administration, if we don't pay attention to those people and what they're saying and, and what they're representing, then I think what happens is we wake up the day after the election and half the country is surprised that, that President Trump is the president of the United States. And I think it's our job to explain to as as many as our viewers as possible, uh, why uh, there are people who support Trump, why, who support the president, why people believe in him. Mm -hmm. And it's our job to, to question them and to, to hold them to account. People ask, why do, you ha why do you pay people to come on and support him? That's what you're referring to. The latest one is, is five-term five Congressman Sean Duffy out of Wisconsin, who we just added to our roster of, of Trump voices on CNN. I get a lot of uh, criticism from folks who, who want to know why do you pay people to, to come on and talk uh, uh, in support of, of the president. It's my belief that we should represent uh, out there what those who support Donald Trump think. Now they say, well, you know, just have them come on as a guest and don't pay them. Look, it is hard. It is hard to find people who will come on and support uh, the president's point of view. Mm -hmm. And so my view has been we have several uh, very ardent pro-Trump supporters on because we're running CNN US, we're running CNN International, we're running HLN. We need, we need those voices and I think there's a place for them. The, I acknowledge there are people who disagree with me on that. I feel strongly that, that their point of view should be heard. Should be heard. Uh, there was this letter last week from one of the president's lawyers, uh, Charles Harder, threatening a lawsuit claiming bias and uh, I, you know, I think CNN's response was this is a publicity stunt. Do you actually think there could ever be a lawsuit like that? No, I, look, that, that letter was ridiculous. Uh, it was a publicity stunt. Uh, they were just trying to, uh, you know, needle us and antagonize us. Uh, mm. You know, the president historically has threatened lawsuits against uh, thousands of people. He always says he's going to sue and it never happens. Mm -hmm. I'm not concerned about this one. No. How would you characterize, given all that we just said in the last 10 minutes, the current relationship between CNN and the Trump White House. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, look, uh, here, here's what I would say. Uh, yesterday, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Esper, sat down for a 30-minute interview with Christian Amanpour. Peter Navarro, uh, uh, who works in the White House, was here today uh, on this panel on this stage. So, 
you know, we have, uh, we have a dialogue with them. We have a, uh, a relationship with them. There are several people uh, within the administration who are happy to come on CNN and defend their positions and, and their take on things. There are others who are afraid to come on CNN and, and within the administration and aren't willing to do so. Uh, so, you know, I, I would say it's, it's, you know, a mixed bag. Uh, I always say, look, we're not looking for an antagonistic uh, relationship at all. Uh, uh, we're not, we're not, we don't set out to be uh, pro-Trump. We don't set out to be anti-Trump. We set out to be pro-truth. Now, I understand in this day and age why being pro-truth can be construed as anti-Trump, but that's not our problem. That's not our fault. We're just here to ferret out the truth. Mm. And, uh, and so our relationship obviously is not, uh, you know, is not perfect, uh, but it's also not our job to have a perfect relationship with the White House. It's our job to tell the truth and to hold those in power accountable, and that's what we're doing. And would you like to wager a prediction about impeachment, about whether the president will be up for re-election at all? Look, I, I don't think it's our job or my job to make that prediction. Um, let's, I think it's our job to cover, uh, cover the events as they unfold. I think we all have a sense of what's likely to happen, but, uh, but uh, I'd rather not get into that prediction. That's why it's news, because we have to see what yeah, happens. see what happens. Listen, nothing has been predictable about the last four years. <laughs> Shepard Smith shocked me by quitting Fox all of a sudden less than two weeks ago. And uh, the immediate question for people like you was, do you want to hire him? So do you want to hire him? Um, uh, I think Shep's a great journalist. Uh, I understand he's uh, not able to take any job for the foreseeable future. But when he's available, he is somebody who I think is incredibly talented and uh, I would be very open to talking to. I think Sunday at 11 is a good time slot for Shep, perhaps? Well, that's what I was thinking. Thinking about making an upgrade? That's what I was thinking. Yeah? That's so weird. You were thinking uh, that, too. Uh, I guess, yeah. well, at least I have a few more months, maybe, until he's available. I don't know when he'll be available, but listen, <laughs> he's, he's an immense talent. and. We're always in the uh, looking for great talent. What did Shep's departure mean for Fox in your mind? Well, I mean, look, I, I don't know that I want to spend that much time uh, analyzing another uh, organization, uh, but I, I, I think it, it, you know. But to answer your question, I will say that I think uh, I was not that surprised. Mm -hmm. um, you, you said it caught you off guard. Look, I think it had become untenable for somebody there who was a, a truth teller and who set out on a regular basis to hold uh, those in power accountable. That is not something that organization does. Uh, that is not something that is in uh, uh, full force there. And uh, it's not even in, you know, half force or... or hey, they say or, they have dozens of great journalists. Yeah, well, you repeat that line a lot, and I think it's one of the mistakes you make in your journalism. And I'm Ooh. serious about this. <laughs> Yeah, because, and, and you know, I've, I, I, you know I, I believe that, uh, listen, are there a handful of, of really good journalists in that organization? Sure. Is there one or two really good anchors at that organization? Sure. Uh, but that doesn't make it a news organization. And it doesn't, what is make it, it, a, it doesn't make it a journalistic enterprise. Listen, it's, you know, I, I, I've said before, it's, uh, it, it's, it's akin to state-run TV. I think it's morphed into conspiracy TV. And... Um, and it's, it's not a place where somebody like Chef Smith could work. Conspiracy I, TV, meaning the shows like Sean Hannity's? Uh, among others. So you think many of the shows are conspiracy TV? I don't think it's a journalistic organization. See, we disagree about this, and that's a good thing. Yes, well, no, uh, you know, I think that you often say that there's this difference between their primetime shows and the news shows side and the and opinion the side. side. There, there is no difference, and I think that mm -hmm. I think that I... I don't see it that way, and I know that you report it that way a lot. I think you're wrong. You think I'm wrong? Well, what What is the? So give me some evidence. Tell me. Tell me. What Watch it. <laughs> so just one more on Fox. What should change at Fox? I mean, isn't the channel doing a disservice to Trump by feeding him conspiracies? Is it doing a service? A disservice to the president by feeding him conspiracy theories. Well, I mean, it's doing a disservice to the country. Hmm. So I mean, you know, uh, look. But again, uh, that's the path that that. Uh, the Murdochs have decided to, to go down, and, and I think that they're responsible uh, for a lot of the, uh, the problems in this country by having instituted a tremendous amount of conspiracies uh, in this country. And, you know, that's why I think the way you and others characterize that organization 
uh, as you know, having a news side and an opinion side is completely erroneous. Well, speaking of corporate ownership, uh, AT&T uh, uh, took over uh, Time Warner, now Warner Media, more than a year ago. What has AT&T's level of influence been at CNN? Uh, well, I mean, they, they, they've actually been uh, terrific uh, uh, corporate parents. Um, they have they said from the start that they would be hands off and not involved, and they've been incredibly true to that word. Uh, you know, I've worked for uh, a lot of conglomerates that own news organizations. Obviously, I worked at NBC for 25 years where General Electric owned it. I worked at mm -hmm. uh, CNN when Time Warner owned it, now when AT&T owns it. Um, they've been as good a corporate parent as, as I've had and I've seen, and they've been uh, unbelievably supportive of what we do and a real champion of uh, the First Amendment. And your portfolio has expanded to include uh, sports as well. What's different about sports? What are you doing, uh, you know, what, what's your day like now versus a year ago? You know, I, I, I probably spend about a third of my time on sports now as opposed to uh, before when I spent 100% of my time on, on, mm -hmm. on just the, the news side. So it's, it's, it's different uh, and I'm, you know, I love, I love that, I love sports, so I'm happy to be uh, uh, doing that. It's, it's, you know, pulled back a little bit from, from CNN. Um, but uh, um, it's been, I think at this time when live programming, live news, live sports, is really, you know, what's what's driving television, and uh, uh, it's it's great for me to be able to play in both sandboxes. I wonder in five years how different will our distribution look like for news I, and sports? Well, I think, look, I think live programming will continue to be the mainstay of what what is traditional distribution today, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's, you know, broadcast or cable or local. Uh, live programming is what's going to sustain it. In five years, there will be more distribution models, and, and, uh, and I think that uh, it's hard to say exactly uh, what will happen, but, but it'll be a part of both the traditional and the new forms. Mm. When, uh, you know, we were talking about Fox and talking about, you say, conspiracy TV, you're part of the conspiracy they present. They talk about you a lot on the Fox well, News Well, they, they talk about two people a lot, me and you. They, they, I do come up once in a while also. I wonder uh, how you, how do you handle it? How do you take it? I don't care. I, I don't pay attention to it. Why not? Do you? Well, there was, I remember a day a few months ago, there was a particularly harsh attack. On who? On me. And uh, you said something, and I, 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 was, I, was, I was having a hard night. And you told me, um, this isn't hard. Colon cancer is hard. Heart disease is hard. Or, or heart, heart surgery is hard. And it was important perspective for me. And I, I wonder if, you know, you carry that through your life, your health challenges, and how that puts it all into perspective for you. Yeah, look, I mean, I've had a lot of health challenges in my life. I don't dwell on them. I don't really talk about them uh, very much. I don't even think about them that much. But, you know, pain is when you wake up in a hospital recovery room with staples in your stomach, and you're in an immense amount of pain, okay? Pain is when you wake up in a hospital recovery room and you have uh, a tube down your throat and you can't really breathe very well. That's pain. When somebody on conspiracy TV complains that you know you're you're uh, the problem, I don't care. It doesn't matter. That's not painful, mm. and and you know it it doesn't matter. And and you know I would say to you, um, it, it, don't pay attention to it. Mm. You know, look, all you should worry about is is doing the right thing and doing the right uh, doing a good job and loving the your wife and your kids and don't pay attention to that stuff. It's not worth it. What are you teach what, what are you teaching your your kids about this time in America about being a citizen and you got you got one up at Harvard right one at, what is what, what are you teaching them well I, I think what's what's important uh, and I'm trying to do with them is teach them to be informed and I think that is really hard in this day and age to know who you can rely on and who you can trust mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that's one of the great disservices that this administration and places like those that we've talked about are doing to this country because they're trying to uh, denigrate the institutions that have made this country great mm -hmm. and that do try to uh, hold those in power accountable. And if we lose those institutions, then, then, then I think it's a huge problem for this country. Mm -hmm. so, so they're doing a huge disservice to this country. I think what I'm trying to do with my kids is to, is to teach them uh, to be informed 
and to learn about what's going on today, to follow what's going on with impeachment, to, to know what's going on with the 2020 election, and to rely on sources that, that you can trust. Mm. Can CNN be doing more to help people figure out what's true? Do you feel like uh, there are, and certainly the Facts First campaign, I think, has, has drawn focus to that, but are there things that we're doing on the air that you want to see us do differently? <laughs> well, look, I, I think that we've invested a lot of time and effort and money and people in, uh, in fact-checking mm -hmm. and, uh, and in uncovering uh, and, and d diving deeper into truth-telling. Um, we, you know, we have whole fact-checking units now we that we didn't have four years ago, right? We have uh, uh, people devoted to that. I think we've got to continue to do that. Uh, uh, I think that, that pursuit of the truth is what matters. What's the number one thing that when, when you see it on our screen, you get ticked off about? What's the biggest thing we do wrong? Um, what's the biggest thing we do wrong? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, what is the biggest thing we do wrong? Uh, I don't know, Brian, what's the biggest thing we do wrong? You cover... Overuse the breaking news Oh, that, yeah, that's easy. Yeah, 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 okay. I'm always saying it's breaking news. Well, that's, that's, you know, yes. Yeah, we do. Okay, fine. <laughs> but that's like... That's, I don't know if that's that important in the big scheme of things, right? <laughs> but yes, we way overuse breaking news. All, all, all television networks do that. It's silly and ridiculous. Okay, fine. What are you proudest of then? Is that an easier question? Okay, so I'm proudest <laughs> of, uh, I think right now I'm proudest of our commitment to uh, uh, our political coverage. You know, we just, uh, we just did seven hours of town halls on climate change. We just did four and a half hours of, of town halls on LGBTQ uh, issues. We just did... We've done two of the first four debates. Uh, uh, we are gonna do uh, another series of town halls soon. Mm -hmm. I think that we have dived deeper into the issues uh, than, uh, frankly, uh, anyone else on television. Uh, and I'm really proud of that. I think that our town halls with every presidential candidate on these issues, uh, people complain a lot, oh, you know, there's too many panels on CNN, and there's too much superficial coverage. You know what? Nobody has spent as much time uh, on those issues uh, as we have, and I'm really proud of that. Mm. Uh, there's been a, a couple of stories. Maybe the reporters are in the room saying uh, the, rating, you know, the ratings for the town halls, they haven't been ratings magnets. And, and, and your reaction is what? That that's not what they're there for? Are you one of those who have written that? <laughs> uh, no. No, look, I mean, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding. If, if we were after just, by the way, some of the town halls have rated really well. Uh, some of them have done average and some have done terribly. But yet, if we, if we cared about only ratings, then we wouldn't do the town halls, right? If we were only chasing ratings, then, then we wouldn't do that. I do think it's one of the things that's wrong with, with how people assess these things, like yeah. it's always about the ratings. Listen, some of them rated really well, some of them rated really poorly. It's not about the ratings. About we're, on, we're on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, <laughs> usually. And, uh, and so, We'll, 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 what we'll, was the usually no, part? I'm, I'm joking. It's well, like, you know, a year ago today was the bomb, the mail bomb at New, in New York. Oh, to CNN? When, when, of course, we did. We were off the air for a couple of minutes until uh, we got back on via Skype. Right. So, look, uh, you know, so, so the town halls, I think, are, are we're trying to do a public service. We're trying to, we're trying to deep, uh, dive deep into the issues, and I'm really proud of that. Yeah. It's not about ratings. It's not about that. It's about doing the right thing and, and covering this election in a way that I think it should be covered. And covering this election, what's, what's the thing we have to make sure we, we get right and, and avoid doing wrong? Are there lessons from 2016? Sure, of course there are, and I've talked many times yeah, about- Yeah, you've said the rallies. I, I, yeah, but I've talked a lot about those things, and I, and I think that if we're not self-aware, then, uh, uh, then shame on us. I think, you know, Jeff Tubin uh, was quite eloquent on this on, on CNN two days ago, or three days ago, when he, he talked about uh, over how, coverage of Hillary Clinton's yeah, emails, he, right? Yeah, he, he was reflecting on how, how much over coverage uh, of the email story there had been in all of the media and that we needed to try to avoid that this time. So look, was that a big story? Yes, it was. Did it deserve a lot of attention? Yes, it did. Should it have gotten, you know, uh, breathless coverage like it did? No, it shouldn't. And I think that, uh, again, giving, giving oxygen to conspiracy theories and giving oxygen to... Uh, uh, things like that I think is a, is a mistake and I think that we're seeing an attempt to do that right now again in different places and I think we should all be careful of that. And what role do the social networks play in this conversation because yeah. uh, obviously Facebook's about to launch this news tab tomorrow, the others have the, their ventures as well. Do you, do you feel they're a net positive or a net negative? 
Well, I think, I think the social media companies do uh, have a huge responsibility, and I think they're actually not living up to that responsibility right now. I think I look at, at, at Facebook, for instance, and, and you know, I think that they're, they took so much uh, heat, rightly so, for uh, what happened in 2016, and, and, uh, you know, and for the political advertising that, that aired in 2016 on there. And now uh, they say that political advertising is just a tiny part of their business, but that they're not going to fact check anything and they're going to take all political advertising, whether it's true or not. I think that is absolutely ludicrous, mm -hmm. and I think that, that they should be called out. So I'll call them out. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, and, and, you know, we have an obligation at CNN. If, if a ad, political ad comes along and it's not true, we're not going to take it. We've turned down, I think, two ads from the Trump campaign. We've taken two. So it's not that we don't have anything against uh, uh, taking those ads, but we're only going to take them when they're, when they're truthful. Facebook should have the same standards. And frankly, given what happened in 2016, maybe they should just sit out this election and not take any political advertising until they can figure it out and get it right. So just do not run political ads. I, that's, what I, that's what I would advise them. That's what you do. would do. Yeah. Um, so wrapping up, the future of CNN is Blank, what do you fill in? The future of CNN is? Really strong. Um, listen, we're, we're in a great place. We're, we're doing great journalism. Uh, we're, we're doing that on a global basis. Uh, we're the world's number one digital uh, news and information site. More people get their news and information from CNN digitally than any other news site in the world. Um, we're going to continue to, uh, to uh, do great storytelling, great journalism, great political coverage. The future uh, will be both on television and in digital. It'll be heavily mobile. It'll be it'll be video, uh, and uh, uh, I think it's incredibly strong. It's really important, I think, to the world that CNN be be strong, and uh, and uh, that's what what I'm really proud of. And the future of Jeff Zucker is because you've said you'd be interested in running for political office someday. Which political office would you be interested in running for? Um, there's a lot of political offices that are interesting. I'm not running, I'm not running. What I've said in the past <laughs> is that I get asked a lot, what do you want to do next? Uh, and I've said I've always been interested in political office. It is something that I will look at at the appropriate time. I have no plans to do so uh, at this time. Uh, yeah, you're politics, giving me all the lines. But I know, what do you want me to say? Politics interests me, you know? Yeah, but which, but where do you, would you see yourself in the mayor's office? Would you see that, That's a good job. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out which uh, yeah, that's a good kind job. of office we're talking about. Well, there's not a lot, right? So you have to you have to narrow it down. That's a good job. I'd be interested in that. You're, you're not working on that right now, though. I am not. In, in, I am not uh, working on that. But Isn't you're going to come out of here. You're going to write a story and say that I'm interested in being mayor. Yeah, that's of the New thing York, about and pesky I'll be totally media out of context. Right? And you know, that's what'll happen. Somebody's got a great job, and then all these pesky reporters are always asking about your next job. Right. Exactly. Why do they do that? Exactly. Well, that's you know, but that's what you do. <laughs> There were stories out there saying you might be the next CEO of Warner Media. Yeah, well, listen, there were a lot of stories that said that I was going to get fired, too. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't believe those, and I don't believe these, right? So it's so like, hard to find reliable sources these days, Jeff. Well, you know, I, I mean, it, it was amusing when Peter Navarro was here this morning, and he said that you should only believe those five guys, <laughs> and all other anonymous sources, you know, you shouldn't believe any of that. So, you know, that was ridiculous. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, but look. You know, there have been stories, there were stories for a long time that I was going to be fired. There's other stories that say the opposite. I didn't believe those. I don't believe these. I'm just doing my job. You actually enjoy your current job. Go figure. Well, not right now, but. Um, <laughs> well, but. now you get to introduce the next session. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian. <laughs> thank you. I thought that was fun. Okay. Thanks. Brian, thank you. That was a fascinating conversation. Um, I have to say, Brian, that was the best of the day. Good.